So number one, some are self-inflicted. Number two, some are inflicted by other people. Number three, let's look at Job, num Job 1. Some are inflicted by Satan and his devils, right? So we won't read all the chapter for sake of time, but you know the story of Job where he, you know, um, Satan and, and the sons of God are before the throne in heaven. And uh, God says to Satan, you know, have you seen my servant Job? And um, that's verse 6, and it says here, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job, doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, about his house? And basically says, Oh, you know, you're just looking after Job because, you're, because uh, Job just loves you because you're doing good to him. You know, and you're just looking after him. You provided him with all this substance. And we know the story, God says, you know, well, you can uh, do whatever you like to Job, but you just can't touch, touch Job. And I just wanted to show you this. It says here, verse 13, And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So, you know, Job at this point might be thinking like a lot of us might and say, well, why is God, you know, doing all this stuff? Well, it wasn't God, right? It was Satan doing all this stuff. Satan had sent these people to destroy his goods, destroy his flocks. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And this is interesting. I just see if you catch this. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, and these beautiful words, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. And this is what people do. Bad things happen to them and they charge God foolishly. They say, why is God doing this to me? Sometimes it's not God. Remember, it's self-inflicted. Sometimes it's inflicted by others. But sometimes it's inflicted by Satan and his devils. And one, you know, one thing that is interesting about this passage is you know, often when natural disasters hit, what do people say? It was an act of God. Right? They'll say, oh, maybe God is judging a nation and things like that, which I personally don't believe because I personally believe the old covenant is finished and God would you know, send pestilence and send nations to judge people in the Old Testament. I don't believe that happens today. And that's why you have nations like Australia and you have nations like America and you have nations like wherever that allow homosexuality and allow all these things in their society and all this death and all these abortions and you wonder, why hasn't God done anything about it? Well, because God is not going to judge that nation like he did in the Old Testament and send an army to oppress them and destroy them because that judgment is eventually coming at Judgment Day when Jesus Christ returns and that will be the army um, that judges all nations. So there's a prophetical meaning of these judges' judgments in the Old Testament that I believe God is not sending judgment to these physical nations as he did in the Old Testament. It's going to be the final judgment, I believe, that is being prophesied about. But an interesting thing here, isn't it, that you know, generally when natural disasters hit, people will say that it's an act of God. But we see here that Satan is capable of creating natural disasters. Because in verse, uh, uh, where was it? Verse 19, And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. So that's kind of like a, a tornado, right? Or a cyclone that comes through and breaks down a house. And generally we think that those things are caused by God, but not all the time. So what if there are, you know, it makes you wonder if everybody believes that they're from God? When something hits, they'll blame God. 
So isn't that even more an incentive for Satan to do something like that, to send a tsunami, to send a hurricane through, to, to make people suffer because it makes people turn away from God? Because they're thinking, well, if God's controlling everything, if God controls the weather, why did God send this tsunami? Why did God allow these things? But then if we realize, hey, wait, maybe it's not always God. Maybe it was Satan that sent that tsunami. Maybe it was Satan that sent that tornado and destroyed all those people because he knew that there would be people there that would turn their face on God and do not as Job did. They would charge God foolishly. So, you know, Satan um, allows things to do. We, we read about Satan being as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's walking about, um, seeking whom he may devour. So don't be somebody that Satan can devour and you don't need to fear Satan. Um, you know, in Revelation 2 verse 10, it says here, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So talking about the tribulation there, but we can see that Satan is responsible for some of the pain and the suffering in this world. The last one I just want to show you here on the topic of Satan, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Oh, sorry, about 2 Corinthians 12, 7. Paul, Paul writes here, and unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So Satan is definitely the cause of a lot of suffering in this world. And a lot of people think that this could be a health problem of Paul's, you know, that he had a thorn in the flesh. I personally believe that it was a person that um, was, was persecuting Paul and would not leave him alone. Um, because in the context of the chapter surrounding this, it talks about you know, evil workers, like evil people. Um, talking about the apostles of Christ in, in, in 2 Corinthians, uh, the apostles of Satan in, in 2 Corinthians 11. So I think the context around these verses are evil people. And the fact as well that it says here that it was a messenger of Satan to buffet him. I think that it was actually a person that would, was persecuting him. 